I honestly believe everything that was meant to happen was supposed to happen. It, in laying in that hospital bed in the rehab recovery room, I had an over, um, overwhelming desire to have hope. And it may have been an article that I read that clarifies hope as hold on, pain ends. Oh, so I held, I, I held on to that to get me through my darkest time. It's amazing. Yeah. Tears of gratitude right here. <laughs> I love it. Welcome to the Life is a Healing Journey podcast by yours truly, Anushka with a C. This podcast explores how you can create a true healthy lifestyle and live your life to the fullest in the face of any circumstance by healing and balancing your mind, body, spirit. If you are someone that's been dealing with disharmony in any area of your life and you are committed to seeking harmony, this podcast is for you. Let's start healing. On today's podcast, we have an amazing guest, Nadine Pasillion, who I'm so grateful that she said yes to doing this interview. She is a former client of mine, absolutely amazing, brilliant, on top of it all, who fully committed to the Self-Empowerment and Healing Mastery Program and just literally took off. She's also a fellow brain tumor survivor and thriver with a rebirth day of June 29th of 2022. So yay for that. And yay. a pharmacist by trade. Please, if you'd like to introduce yourself any further, feel free. If there's anything I missed, please go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. Yes, that's me. I am a brain cancer survivor. And as Anushka has taught me doing her program, we are going to control or we have uh, manifested that this tumor will not come back. And I truly believe that is my scenario. And that's my purpose. And I'm solely but surely bringing back the magic in my life and focusing on all my amazingness and I can't wait to share my story with you all. Yay, I'm so happy to have you here. So share share with us what was that? And it could be more than one incident too, right? I always say what's that one incident that woke you up out of the autopilot light? And for some it's multiple, for some it's that one, right? So whatever that is for you, what are what is the one or multiple different incidences that yes. I would definitely consider myself special or magical, as you would say. Special um, and magical and unique, yes, all the things. Yes. <laughs> so I did have a seizure on June 9th of 2022, and then my whole world turned upside down. I vividly remember my seizure, and I'm a pharmacist, so I know what it's like and the signs and whatnot. Very scary. Took myself to the ER. And they did scans. And after being stuck in the ER room for 24 hours, I got an MRI, got a CT. They found out that I had a lesion in my brain on the right side. <sighs> of course, it's my right side and my non-creative side. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but they said it could be an infection, fluid, or a tumor. And I was like, all I could think about was, oh my God, I can't drive anymore. <sighs> and how am I going to get to work? That's literally what I was thinking in the ER. But upon further tests and talking with the neurosurgeon, they're like, no, you definitely had a seizure and it's definitely a tumor, but it's looking low grade. So I was like, okay, all right. They can cut it out and we'll be good. So fast forward 20 days exactly, I was wheeled into my surgery room and they cut out my tumor. And the first question I asked upon waking up was, did you get it all? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't speak um, because I had some complications from my surgery. I had a lot of face numbness on the left side because the right brain controls the left side of your body and the left controls the right, vice versa. Yeah. So my face was numb, not moving a lot, and I couldn't speak right away. 
which was very scary and not expected, but was meant to happen so that I could get stronger and learn and and relearn and get back on track. So fast forward post surgery surgery and I'm on a heavy dose of steroids and I kid you not, I am talking to God, hallucinating, but I honestly believe everything that was meant to happen was supposed to happen. It in laying in that hospital bed in the rehab recovery room, I had an overwhelm, overwhelming desire to have hope. And it may have been an article that I read that clarifies hope as hold on, pain ends. Oh, so I held, I, I held on to that to get me through my darkest time. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Tears of gratitude right here. <laughs> I love it. Share um, with us the tumor you had. I know that's something I didn't actually say. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's my, yeah, I was going to say that myself. And then I realized I never actually said what stage oh, or anything. So I had that. a, I had a, well, they thought it was a low grade, like grade one or two. And brain, brain tumors are different. They're not stages, they're grades. Mm -hmm. And I was comforted in the fact that my surgeon told me that the brain stays in the brain, brain tumors. They don't spread elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, that's a plus side. I'll, I'll hold on to that as well. And then once they did the actual tumor testing on the actual material that they took out of my brain, they found out that it was a grade four, which is the highest it can be, but it's an astrocytoma. The worst kind is a glioblastoma, multiform, G or otherwise known as GBM. Yeah. So so I went in thinking, okay, I'm a grade one or two. I don't need chemo or radiation. We can just watch it. And then two days after my surgery, my surgeon walks into my room and he's like, nope, sorry. It's a higher grade than we thought. It's a grade three and it possibly could be a grade four. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I was so thankful to have my friend, my best friend, Talmar, next to me. <sighs> And my surgeon said to me something so clear. And I remember it to this day. He's like, you can choose to walk down this negativity path and be afraid and succumb to this illness. Or you can have hope and be positive and surround yourself with support and kick ass. Yeah. I love that your doctor, you know, majority of doctors don't do that. That I is an amazing doctor. To actually I, have that. Super cute at boot. <laughs> <laughs> so that helped. Yeah. Um, yeah, because and then it was a few. So we started working together end of October. Actually, like, oh, my gosh. It's like literally, I think we just passed a year uh, since we've known each other. Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 So he told me that and I was like, okay, all right. We got some work to do. And so I kicked butt in my rehab. I was high functioning. They kicked me out. They said, you can go home. <laughs> um, but, you know, as I said, even though I was on a ton of steroids, I had a spiritual connection. Divine, divine, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, yeah, you were connected <laughs> divinely. I, I totally was the same way. So I get what you're saying. It was yeah. like, is it so, it's hard to describe in words. It's very hard. Yeah. It's but it's like, as if it becomes you and you're just like, <laughs> how did that just yeah, happen? Definitely. So, I mean, yeah. fast forward, I'm home and <sighs> I start decluttering and organizing and getting rid of unnecessary things. Like, why do I still have this? I'm not using it. Like, uh, it's I like something thing, yes. <laughs> finally woke up. Like, I don't need to hold on to this tiny little piece of thing. I can get rid of it. I organize my closet, my pantry, my linen closet, everything that if I didn't wear it, I was getting rid of it. So let if me ask you real quick. It was on yeah. your right frontal lobe. Was it like close yeah. to the right? Okay. Yeah. So same, right? And you know, organization is there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's why I had, to, I too, I came home and I'm like, everything is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt so good yeah. to get all that, like, I guess you could say stuck energy, like cleared and 
And then I could focus on everything else. So, so from then on, you know, I, I got this book that I started reading. It's called Radical Remission. And with anyone with a cancer diagnosis, I highly recommend you purchase it and read it and, and do the work. So I listened, I marked pages, I read, and I was like, this is easy. I can totally do this. She outlines in perfect detail, like, I believe it's like nine or 10 steps to, and she's interviewed so many people that have radically gone into remission. And I know we don't like this word because- <laughs> way that I know that's okay though. <laughs> you know, as you have taught me, Anushka, that remission is- not necessary. We we are healed. We are we are healing. We are cured. Yes, cured. And we are thriving and whatnot. So and just to share with everyone listening, the reason we I coach and we don't use the word remission is because when you actually look it up, it says there's a possibility that the cancer may come back. And just even remission is connected to cancer. So why would anyone want to use that word instead of saying I'm healed or healing or cured? So that's really what it comes down to because words are powerful. So, yeah. So would you say that it was once you got home that you feel like, or was it after the seizure where you're just like, oh my gosh, like life is now different? I would say part one would be right after the seizure and the waiting for my actual surgery, then once in the hospital bed. And then I think the final kicker was being at home and then realizing that I really needed to change a lot of aspects of my life and wake up, so to say. Mm -hmm. Then I started reading the book and researching everything that it had said. And then once I finished that book, there was a website on it that said, if you are interested, I have a website where people share their cancer journeys. Yes. So I searched in and I typed in brain tumors and I got three profiles. And one stood out in particular, was like screaming at me. And it was Anushka's. And it said, pick this one, pick this one, look at me. And then I <laughs> I saw a mindset coach and I was like, what is that? <laughs> I was gravitating towards it. I was so intrigued about it. So I clicked on it and then it led me to your website. And then all the things I was like limiting beliefs and how to heal yourself and fix yourself. And I was like, no, oh, she has a worse tumor than I did. And she is five <laughs> years, post, you know, recovering and healed and, and doing an amazing thing with her life. And I was like, I need, I need, I need her. <laughs> and now I am healed, cured, thriving, yes. winning, act my magic, dancing randomly, listening to yes, music. Yes, I love it. So it's amazing. Yes. 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 So we our 12 week session in October, we finish in January mm -hmm. with you know, kids getting sick, us getting sick, recovering, holidays, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But honestly, I, I consider you a true friend. I can Same. I feel like I can call you at any time or text you with any problem and you'll respond and you're there for me. Mm -hmm. So I can talk about some of the challenges after my. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the challenges and yeah, share it too. Like with um, in terms of the challenges, like how your mindset was and how it shifted too. Right. So the challenges and how you created wins out of them. Yes. So mm -hmm. I was a very angry person. I would yell at my kids a ton. Mm -hmm. I had, I had a baby in 2020 and I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm just having postpartum rage. It's nothing else. Well, far be it from me. I didn't know my body was actually screaming at me, manifesting itself in the form of anger towards my children or my husband or towards whoever one would, who would criticize me or anything. I was like, oh, I brush it off. I brush it off. And then my body started yelling at me and screaming at me. And of course I got sick. That's what happens when you ignore your body's signals and signs. I was telling myself I would implement a diet program. I would exercise. I would finally do this, finally do that, or not worry about this. And I put it all off and my body was like, 
I can't deal with this anymore. You need to wake up. So I learned my lesson the hard way. Uh, but so I had mentioned earlier that after my surgery, I had like my my left side of my face was rather numb. My smile was very crooked. And my sister was getting married in like three months. So that was fun. Hmm. I had a lot of speech therapy, Pete's physical therapy, occupational therapy, just to get my smile like back to normal to get to use my hands better, my left hands particularly. Hmm. Um get stronger. I had massive nausea. Um interestingly enough, I had one session with Anushka and we were talking about nausea and she's set some energetic cord free and I didn't even notice my nausea for the rest of the day I was like oh my god <laughs> I remember that <laughs> that's true though I, was like, I love you I think I texted her I was like I love you I don't know what you did but I don't have nausea for the rest of the day <laughs> oh my god yes I do remember that yeah yeah so I mean since I had to go through chemo and radiation now which I wasn't expecting I was like oh great the radiation kicked my butt my dad had to drag me out of bed every day. I didn't want to go, but mm -hmm. I knew I had to. I had I had a a two year old and I had a six year old. I had to be there for them. I wasn't going to let anything get in my way. I wanted to see them grow up and find love and have kids. I wanted to see my grandkids, and I know I will. Now yes. I know I will. yeah yeah. We created because that future I vision too, right? Yes, because I'm going to live and love my life till 90 and beyond. Yes. <laughs> Help me realize. Um, and once I found out about your program, I said, you know, I saw how much it costs. And I was like, I am not one to spend money like this. But I knew I had to do it because I was done with making excuses about thing why I wasn't doing certain things that I definitely needed to do. Yeah, it's like investing in yourself, right? And it's that's one, one thing we don't do. We don't do that. Yeah. We'll invest in so many other things, <laughs> but we put ourselves last a lot of times. So yes. really yes. acknowledge you for doing that. Being a mother, you put them first. You put your mm -hmm. family first, your house first. You don't look at yourself. So this is a reminder for anyone listening, like take care of yourself too. You're just as important. Absolutely. Everyone needs you, but if you're not there, then, you know, you need to wake up and, and invest in yourself, work on yourself, get better for yourself and for everyone else that you that relies on you. Absolutely. I was also very like skeptical with accepting money and support. I'm not one to seek help, you know? And once I got sick and I was home, Everyone's coming over, bringing food, talking, texting, checking in on me. I was overwhelmed with the support. Oh, and I and learned how to do that. Yes, yeah, I learned. Yeah, I remember. With gratitude and, and just with happiness to be like, to be just so grateful that so many people care about me. I mean, my friend from pharmacy school that I still talk to to this day set up a GoFundMe or she had asked in like right after my surgery, she's like, how can I help? And I said, no, I don't feel comfortable. And then once I started doing Anushka's program, I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time to revisit this GoFundMe. And I was like, she, I, and I asked her, I was like, would you mind setting it up? I think I'm ready now. And this was, more than halfway into our sessions mm -hmm. and she set it up for me and honestly it blew me away overnight like it raised so much money and mm -hmm. there was people in pharmacy school that I hadn't talked to in t over 10 years and they had donated and I felt so touched so like appreciated I guess that's the main word like mm -hmm. I haven't talked to you and you felt the the felt the desire to help me out, you know, and I was so touched by it. It's it like really an overflow of emotions, oh. right? And mm -hmm. if anyone who donated list is listening, like I am so thankful you have taken so much burden off my shoulders mm -hmm. and my family. <laughs> oh. 
Tears of gratitude. I'm here with you. Oh, and, you know, I get it because it was similar with us. Like our friends set up a GoFundMe and it was so hard for us to receive. That was like one of the biggest lessons for me because I was always the giver, <laughs> similar to you. And um, for me to open up and finally receive without feeling the need to do something in return. Yeah. It just over like fills you with so much gratitude, and mm -hmm. that's that's what these tears are for. <laughs> they're they're happy tears, good tears. <laughs> oh, definitely yes. I mean, I am terrified talking about this, but <laughs> you're doing amazing. Oh my goodness! Just so everybody knows, Nadine was nervous, but look at her; she is flowing magically, doing awesome. We did do a psych case session right before. <laughs> And look at you go. Look at you flow. So, I mean, and I couldn't drive for an entire year. And that was very hard mm -hmm. on me. I mean, I had to ask my 75 year old dad to take me to every doctor appointment, every school pickup, every school drop off. I mean, but it's time that I got to spend with my kids. I was off for a year from work. So I am grateful that I got that time. Like I would have never. And and maybe they really needed that. Maybe they really needed me to be home. And I've accepted that. Yeah. So that's, um, like, that's, a, that's a gift, right? Because there's gifts that came out of this situation. So can you share some of the gifts that, I mean, that's definitely one, right? Yeah. Um, well, meeting you, I say top, top priority gift. Um, uh, I'm so bummed we missed each other when you were here in San Diego. I Oh, I know. I Next time you come, you'll have to let me know in advance, and that way we can meet up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten closer to my husband. I was afraid, like when I got diagnosed, I was like, "Is this going to tear us apart? Is this going to uh -huh. keep going to make us drift farther away?" But it made us closer. Mm -hmm. He changed. I changed. We're both evolving, becoming better versions of ourselves. Um, but yes. Uh, I, another one, I also stopped making excuses for why I wasn't doing things when I needed to do it. Um, I started focusing on a future life vision as we work together on it. And I still say it to myself every night before I drift to, off to sleep, you know, that I'm living a beautiful, magical life till 90 and beyond. This tumor isn't coming back. And I'm going to be surrounded by my family and my friends whom I call family and living out our best life, laughing, sharing jokes, memories, traveling, everything. Mm -hmm. I possibly, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to live out my life and enjoy it. Yeah, you're doing it. Yes. And I feel like you're a lot more present. Right, you're living yeah. in, the, in the present. I think the a better word is I'm more aware. Like I can slip into back my old uh, into any of my old habits, but yeah, it, I, I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm aware of it. And then I think that is yeah. just as important as as taking an action to fix it. Like absolutely, I, that's the first step. You are you create awareness and then you take action, right? Yeah. 80% of it is awareness. Once you have awareness, you can catch it and then get into action to yeah. Because I'm just perfect. exactly what you're doing. Old habits, but I really try to reverse it. And mm -hmm. I try to try and to you're doing it. So you're not yeah. trying, you're actually doing it, right? Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> I love um, it. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, what about in terms of like, I know you, you said you definitely went, you know, spiritual and divine and God and all that in terms of frequency. Cause I remember when we first started working together, yes, you had more of the anger frequency and whatnot, but how do you feel like that's shifted? Like in terms of the spirit side of things energetically, do you notice a difference now versus how you used to be? A lot of the time, yes, but some of the time I do feel myself still getting angry, like towards my children. But I think that's also just being a mom and, you know, yeah. they're annoying sometimes, but 
super amazing other times. And I think that's just normalness. Like, Oh, absolutely. You're human. And it, as long as you're actually allowing yourself to feel the feels, yeah. right? Not suppress or repress them. Exactly. That's, that's the most important thing. Yes. Oh. And I, um, I think it was our last session that we were working on. Mm -hmm. You said, what do you think your life's purpose is? And oh, I was yes. like, she's like, she, you asked me, you're like, what does, what comes to mind when you think about your life's purpose? And I couldn't think of anything or I was struggling. And she's like, I see it plain and clear and it's illuminate. And I was like, wow, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. You started bawling. <laughs> Do you remember yes. <laughs> that oh. hit home? That was it. Yes. So when I, when I, when I finally like let that sink in after our session, I was like, well, what is that? What could that mean for me specifically? And I was like, well, that could mean me seeking God, the Jesus or the Bible, reading more scripture, which I had done through my year journey. Mm -hmm. um, or it's creating awareness around brain tumors, which has gone up so high now and it's affecting so many young people. And Maybe I am to illuminate in my life to help others struggling or open their eyes to things that are harming them, whether that be their phone, their AirPods, Wi-Fi, EMFs, could be a number of things. If I can help just one other person feel less alone and give hope that someone gave me, and then I have truly won the jackpot, you know? Like, yeah. So... So when I would go on my walks last year, even in the freezing cold, I would wear my zip up jacket and just get moving and walking and talking to God. You know, I was I was re understanding like I am worth it and I'm going to celebrate everything that I achieve and all my I achieve all the good results. I have really good scans and I deserve all my rewards. And if my reward is having a piece of dark chocolate, then I'm going to have it. <laughs> yes, and is treat yourself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Oh. Well, do you feel like you have embraced life as a healing journey? I believe I have. Yes. Yes. And it could, like you said, right? You're still going to feel the anger. You're still going to okay. have some. That's life. We're constantly healing and healing one layer at a time. And you're doing exactly that and having that awareness to catch it immediately. So that's amazing. Anything else that you want to share before we end this episode? Um, I think. I think I am okay. I think I have reached my message and I hope yes. I've been fun and, and thank you very much for having me on your podcast. Oh my gosh. You're so welcome. Thank you for being a guest on life is a healing journey with me today and sharing your absolutely inspiring brain tumor thriver story because we need more success stories like ours. That's what I love about radical remission as much as I don't care for the word remission, but that in itself, to me, it's that we need more of these success stories out there for the hope and inspiration that anything is truly possible, right? Rather than the narrative of cancer that is already there. So thank you for joining me to change this narrative of cancer. <laughs> really. Well, for thank you for having me and sharing my story. I hope. I hope it inspires and helps others. Absolutely. Subscribe to not miss next week's episode focused on the mind. Thank you for listening to Life is a Healing Journey podcast. You are here to peel and heal one layer at a time, to live your life to the fullest in the face of any circumstance while embracing a life filled with love, joy, and peace. If you are in disharmony in any area of your life and truly desire to be in harmony and committed to elevating your health and well-being, I'm one click away. Find me at healingwithanushka.com. And remember, that's Anushka with a C. And if you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with your loved ones. Get your healing on. Until next time.